What's going on guys? It's Red Bull Tanker and welcome back to Historical Board Gaming's The Korean War. We are on turn 8. Ah, oh, it was it's been quite the turn. So, let's do it. Starting off North Korea. North Korea collected 41 IPC this turn. Um down here in Seoul they bought two infantry, two artillery, two tanks and then they repaired the two damage on the soul factory and then up in uh pyongyang uh, up in pyongyang they bought one infantry or no two infantry an artillery and a tank and saved three ipc uh oh uh combat this turn let's see Yes. Uh, combat this turn. So the North Koreans came south from Chung, uh, Chunchong or Chunchon. Let's give you that. Uh, they came down here into Kanung and attacked a lone South Korean infantry there that was defending. Um. Oh no, sorry, that happened last turn. What am I talking about? Oh no, wait. It's turn eight. Sorry, wow, I am off. Sorry, that happened last turn. Sorry guys, my notes got a little scrambled here today. Um, all right, so North Korea did not do any combat this turn. And then, yes, then they deployed their forces in Seoul and Pyongyang. China, China this turn, they uh, it was their turn for purchases. They collected uh, 35 IPC, but they did save 5 from the last turn, so they did have 40 to spend. Um, and on Sean, they bought 2 infantry, 2 artillery, and 2 tanks all over here. And Bada Jiang, they bought... Uh, one infantry, two artillery, and a tank. All right, coming down to South Korea. On their turn, South Korea collected 17 IPC. Once again, they just purchased five infantry and two supply. Um, combat. Uh, so, using the feature for the first time... So in this game, artillery and tanks are actually allowed to do uh, fi uh, to do fire missions into opposite territories, um, and they can target what units they want to kill. So a South Korean artillery here in Andong attempted to attack the North Korean artillery here in Osan. Unfortunately, the artillery missed, and that North Korean artillery was able to fire back and destroy the uh, the South Koreans in counter battery fire. So that was unfortunate for the South Koreans. Um, on the non-combat, so oh, I guess I forgot to do non-combats for... Actually, the North Koreans didn't have any non-combats this turn. Anyways, non-combats for the South Koreans. Uh, just getting more forces pushed up to Andong. Uh... More forces, more supplies, just trying to get as much stuff from Pusan forward as possible to shore up the defenses here in the south. All right, going over to the United States. Uh, the United States had 50 IPC, or they collected 50 and had three to spend, so they had 53. Uh, this time around, considering what I said in the last video that the last turn was kind of the last time for really the U.S. to buy... A lot of ground reinforcements. The U.S. settled on buying four mech or four trucks, 20 supplies, and then they also bought two fighters and saved one IPC. Combat. The U.S. did have some combat this turn. Um, all the American planes from Sanju and the bomber from Busan went into Seoul again to bomb the factory. Uh, Airsoft Commando elected not to scramble, and the U.S. Bombers had an amazing day, and uh, Max damaged it for 10. 
Next, uh, the U.S. followed the South Korean, um, the South Koreans, and used their two artillery in Sanju, each one targeting a North Korean target here in Osan. There was an infantry and an artillery. Um, so we were able, the U.S. was able to kill the North Korean infantry. However, the South Korean artillery once again was on the mark and was able to destroy one of the American um, one of the American artillery pieces uh, or art artillery units with counter battery fire. Non combat. Now that was it for combat. Non combat. Uh, the remainder of the 25th Infantry Division arrived in Sanju along with the advanced elements of the 1st Armored Division. The U.S. brought more, uh, brought all of its fighters back to Sanju, moved its bomber back to um, Pusan. Um, the remaining force, um, the 2nd Infantry Division moved from Pusan to here, while the rest of the 2nd Division arrived here in Pusan. And then just continued the U.S. momentum of moving the last of the U.S. forces across the um, across the supply track towards uh, landing at Pusan. All right, and then finally the U.N. The U.N. collected twenty IP or collected twenty IPC. They purchased a fighter, and then they dropped ten supplies. Combat. Um. The UN had one round of combat. They took their bomber and these two fighters, which were originally stationed here in Guangzhou. They went up to Pyongyang. Once again, Air South Commando decided not to scramble. And this time around, the Royal Australian Air Force uh, bomber crews were on target as well and were able to damage the Pyongyang factory for 10 damage as well. So the Allied, the Allied bomber fleets uh, being very successful with their bombing runs this turn. Non-combat, uh, the UN um, moved their fleet out of C-Zone 4 to uh, this C-Zone here. I believe this is C-Zone 3. So it doesn't I think I'm covering the mark. So they moved their fleet up to C-Zone 3. Uh, they moved the fighters from the Pyongyang strike here onto the carrier just to provide some protection. Um, Airsoft Commando does have four fighters over here in Seoul, so never sure what they might do. Um, moved some supplies around uh, and uh, moving forces up here to Tejan, uh, getting those guys um, into position. Uh, deploying two fighters here to Kwangju, while also del finally delivering the South Koreans their artillery at Pusan while uh, the transport and infantry just stay here in C-Zone 5 for the time being. And then, as always, they are also moving their reinforcements, the last of their reinforcements along the track as well. All right, well, that is going to be it for turn eight, and we are now pressing on to turn nine. We are in the midst of mid-1952. We have four turns left. And we will see you guys for the next time, next one. So that's it for now, guys. Until next time, take care.